Welcome back guys, Mike here. Today we're gonna be planting the Ancient Gardens tank. In the last video, we built out the hardscape for this thing, and now we're all ready for the plants. I have a ton of them, the most plants I've ever gotten in at one point, ever. They're right behind you guys. We're gonna flip the camera around here in just a second to check that out. But if you guys are new, and this is the first time you're seeing this tank, there will be a link for a playlist that has all of the Ancient Gardens videos in it, so you can start from the beginning and catch up. So here we go guys, check it out. This is a table full of plants. We got a box full of Monte Carlo down here, but check it out. So we have pretty much everything in pots. Let's start out here with this area right here. This is all S repins that we're gonna be putting in the foreground. We have some dwarf hair grass in pots over here. We have some long hair grass in pots over here. We have some Crip Parva over here. These will get a lot smaller once they transform into a submerged leaf growth pattern. Uh, this is all boost, like from here to here. Then we have a little bit of Anubius Nana Petite, and then I think that might be it for these. But then over here in our little farm area, we have two full tubs of Monte Carlo. This is stuff that came in like three weeks ago. And you know, the timing for this project has just been kind of a nightmare. So this was initially my first plant order. This over here is just some boosts and some more S repins. And then we have some mosses and stuff back here. But yeah, originally I thought we were gonna be planting this tank like a few weeks ago. And so I made that initial plant order thinking that it was gonna be perfect timing. Turns out it wasn't. Um, but I'm kind of glad that we weren't ready to plant then because that plant order, despite the cost of it, it wasn't nearly anywhere what we needed to do this tank. Over here in this tank, we have a bunch of mini Pelia, also called coral moss down here. There's a nasty looking one right there, but this has also been here for a super long time, and now it's finally gonna get used. I ended up getting like 99% of these plants direct from a wholesaler, so I can't say that like, you know, go and buy these plants from Cory, but Cory does sell a lot of what we're gonna be using today. So I'm gonna have links for plants to his store down in the description. If you use those links to buy plants, I get a kickback and Corey will also appreciate it. Now, because this planting is gonna take pretty much all day, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes like five or six hours um, if I'm taking my time. Uh, you're gonna wanna keep your tank moist. You gotta keep the plants a little wet. So this is a spray bottle that I used to use. And then I was like, no, I should upgrade. I should get something a little bit bigger because I'm always running back up to the sink to refill it. So I got one of these, which I think holds what is this, like a gallon? A little less than a gallon, but then I was like, no, that's dumb. I should just get one of these. So, can you see it? Yeah, I got a backpack, so I won't have to run up to the sink, like, at all. We'll have all the water we need right on my back, like a camel. Did I really slice my neck on that box? Jeez. Before we get started, guys, I gotta give a huge shout out to Waterbox Aquariums. They're the ones that provided this amazing tank for me. Looking at the hardscape through this glass, it's insane. Like, I thought the tank looked really good. It looked like, you know, it's got the low iron glass. It looked like it was high clarity, but you can't really tell until you have something in it. But just being in person and looking at this scape through this front panel is crazy. It looks so freaking clear. I can't believe it. It's just, it's beautiful. This glass is so thick. I mean, it's like three quarter inch and it's like it's not even there, it's insane. So huge shout out to those guys. I have a link to their website so you can check out all the different tanks they offer. They don't just have massive ones, they have some small ones that we're gonna be scaping and doing some projects in soon as well. So check them out and show them some love. We're gonna start out here with our S repins, guys. So we have a lot of pots of this. This plant, we're gonna plant it primarily next to the larger structures of dragonstone in the aquarium, almost hugged up to these land masses that are coming up out of the ground. As we go through this planting process, you're gonna notice that we're going to layer our plants. So we're gonna have areas where we keep a specific plant, if that makes sense. So the S repins is one of the larger leafed plants that we're gonna be using today. And so we're gonna use that, like I said, it kind of in one area around the main structures of the tank. And then we're gonna use smaller leafed plants, AKA the Crit Parva in front of that. 
So I already gave it away. The next plant we're going to be doing is Crit Parva. Now this plant came into me in a little bit larger size than what it's going to end up being in the aquarium. These are grown in a farm in Florida where they grow up out of the water and thus their leaf morphology is a lot different. And typically plants can get a lot bigger when they're grown up out of the water. But when this plant stays submerged in our tanks, it remains pretty small. The leaves end up not getting that big. And it is of course a carpeting plant just like hair grass or anything else. The next plant we're going to be using is the dwarf hair grass. So this stuff, it is also grown immersed. So if we look closely, you can't really see it through the plastic here. It's hard to show, but you will see little seed pods on the end of this. So to prepare these, I'm going to take them out of the pot, snip off the top so they're a lot shorter, and then we're going to plant them. And for this plant, we're going to be planting the hair grass, not in the substrate, not in the foreground like you would typically do, but we're going to put these plants on the dragonstone about halfway up the total height of the scape. I'm choosing to do this because I had so much success planting the hair grass, not in the substrate, but on the rocks of my avatar tank. As long as we fertilize the tank, these plants should do fine. And I think it'll give it a pretty cool look when it's all said and done. Because the Dragonstone has so many different holes and weird cracks in it, it's going to be really easy to just fit the roots of the hair grass into the nooks and crannies of the stone. Next, we're going to be planting the Anubius Nana Petite, which you see here. And we're also at the same time going to be planting some of these Bucephalandra plants. I ordered these as kind of like a mixed species bunch. So you see we have two types here. Here's a larger, darker leafed and then a little bit of a lighter leafed plant right here. So I think what we're going to do is maybe put those plants a little bit higher up and then have the boost sit a little bit lower in the scape. Boost tends to like a little bit higher light. So ideally we would put that higher up, but I just have a feeling it's going to look a little bit better if we have the darker, more brown leaf stuff down towards the substrate. That might change though. We'll see how the first few plants go and then we'll make some decisions. These are both rhizome plants, so we could position them in the same way we did the hair grass. They would be just fine. Unfortunately, I used up all of the good holes in the rock for the hair grass, so we might have to end up using a little bit of super glue to hold the Anubias and the boost in place. All right, guys, so I know what you're thinking. What are we going to do with the trees up here? I was going to do that plant last, but I can't wait any longer. I want to get that stuff on and see how it looks. And you probably already guessed it. We're going to be using Monte Carlo on all of these trees. All right, I have like 200 pots of it, and I think that's gonna be enough. You'd be surprised, it doesn't go very far, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do. The bonsai trees are kind of perfect for this because of the structure of the branches up at the top. We shouldn't have to use any glue. We can just take the plant right out of the pot and then wedge it into the intricate branch work, and they should hold just fine. You might remember a few months back, I did a video showing three different examples of what you could use on a bonsai tree. One of those examples was Monte Carlo. Now, I personally have never done it before. I've grown Monte Carlo, not in substrate, like on rocks and a little bit on wood here and there, but I've never done it on a bonsai tree like this. So in order to get this plant to stay alive and grow and do well, we're definitely going to have to be fertilizing the tank. That was something that we were going to be doing anyway. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but we are going to have to go through a super long period of it acclimating and getting, you know, used to a submerged growth, especially without access to any fertilizers via the roots. So it's going to be tricky. It's really going to make or break this tank but I think the end result, if we can get it, is going to be absolutely amazing. Well, there it is, guys. Got all the trees done. <laughs> I'm trying to hold back my excitement for the scape uh, for just a second because we're not done. We still have to do some gluing of mini Pelia and some moss around all of the dragonstone and do some just some fine detail work to the trees and whatnot, and then it'll be complete, and then we'll do the really stressful thing which is fill the tank up for the first time but um yeah what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below is this what you thought ancient gardens would be or did you think it was going to be something else i was really just trying to achieve something that looked like kind of like a forgotten jungle or you know something along those lines and i think to me at least I was able to capture it. All the super big crit parva in the foreground is just throwing it off really for me and it, it's making, it's bugging me, but it won't be the case for long. You know, we just have to be patient and, and then the scape will look the way that I want it to. But enough of that guys, let's finish up the scape. Let's glue the moss and then we'll take a look at the final product. So like I mentioned, we're going to be using mini Pelia. This is also sold as coral moss. 
on AquariumCoop.com. It's kind of hard to find. Corey just recently got this stuff in, and I hope he has a lot of it because I'm going to need to get some more. I absolutely love this stuff. It's not really a moss. It's actually a liverwort, so it's a type of plant, but it looks very similar to a moss. It's a little, it's kind of brittle. Like, it, uh, it doesn't feel the same as this uh, peacock moss that we have over here. It's a lot more firm, but it has these tiny, tiny little leaf structures, and I think it's going to go perfectly in this scape. You've seen this before. It's in the Avatar tank. It's in the uh, shrimp tank two doors next down to it, and I just love it. All we do is pull this stuff off of the stainless steel mat that it's on, and we just glue it where we want it. All right, guys, I think that's it. Let's go ahead. Let's fill up the tank and cross our fingers that everything stays in place. Guys, the tank has been filled up for a little bit longer than a week now. I'm sorry for making you wait, but I wanted to show this off to you with the water a little bit more clear. Right after we fill up any tank, it's not going to look its best, and we're still working on it over here, but it looks a heck of a lot better than it did day one. This way, I also get to give you guys a little bit of an update on the tank because a lot can happen in only a week and a half. Let's back it up though. So right after I filled up the tank, we of course dechlorinated it. I used the Fritz Guard to get rid of any chlorine that was in the water. And then to jumpstart our beneficial bacteria cycle, I added in more than a few bottles of the Fritzzyme 7. And then the last thing I did before taking a much needed break was add in the fertilizer. So we're using the Brightwell Florin Grow and the Florin Multi. Adding fertilizers to this tank is definitely going to be a requirement, especially for the Monte Carlo up on the trees. Without a good source of nitrogen and the secondary nutrients in the multi, a lot of these plants just aren't going to have a chance. I mean, the Monte Carlo, no way. The s repens is also going to really appreciate it, and everything in the system is just going to do better. We're also running CO2 on this aquarium, so let's pan over here to how I have it set up now, which is not how I want to have it. I just have a little diffuser down here that is bubbling up here and it's hitting this wave maker. We'll chat about that in a second. Another important component of this whole setup, but down here you can see I just have the CO2 art regulator and you can see the bubble rate right there. It looks like it dropped a little bit. Basically, I don't even want to be able to see the bubbles in this thing. So something more like that is probably adequate. Getting enough carbon dioxide in this system is going to be a challenge. We have an open top tank. The evaporation alone is happening at a rate faster than I thought it would. This is literally a day's worth of evap, maybe two. I think maybe two, but you get the idea. It's definitely going to take a little bit longer to fine tune this thing and get everything the way it needs to be. The Owase Biomaster 600 filter down here is chugging along. It's doing a good job. I'm actually surprised in the ability for the integrated heater to keep up. I have the tank running at, I believe it's 76. Let's get a little check over here and see, yep, 76.2. So I'm happy with that. It doesn't take long after a water change to get it adjusted. The only thing I will say is I wish the flow rate was a little bit stronger out of this filter, but you know, it's working out. To supplement the filter's flow and help to move everything around in this tank the way that we need it, we have a current E-Flux pump over here it's just kind of tucked in the back there. There's a control module down here that the pump plugs into, and then we can control everything from our phone. So if we select the ancient gardens, we can go to program, we can select our pumps, and then you can see we have our pump right here, pump number one. We're running it at 20% flow. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can control in this app. We're not gonna talk about all of it, 
but unfortunately it's meant for Currents Marine stuff. I'm not sure what their marine LED is, but it's meant to be an integrated part of that system. I'm just glad that we can dial back the flow on this pump because it at full blast was not something that was gonna work out in here. Since we're on the topic of LEDs now, I guess, let's talk about the current Serene LEDs that we have up here. I've been working on tweaking the 24 hour mode to get the right kind of color spectrum at the right type of day and go through a kind of a cool cycle. And so I'm still working on that. Once I get everything completely figured out, I'll be sure to share that info with you guys. I also grabbed another one of the light bars and put it up here at the top. So you've probably been noticing how I have this gradient of almost like orangish yellow and then it fades up to the blue here. I just think it looks really, really cool. I have some extender pieces coming for these arms so we can bring the lights out a little bit farther and that way we can get more light here in the front of the tank. It's, it's pretty tough to do. I mean, we'd need a light basically sitting on the front of the tank to light up um, the fronts of these trees, but hopefully when those parts come in, we'll have them, we'll get them on there, and then the next update, I'll be sure to clue you guys into how that's working out. Other than changing the way that we're diffusing CO2 into the aquarium, I pretty much have everything the way that I want it to be in this tank. We're starting to see mold pop up on a lot of the bonsai trees. That's a normal thing to have happen. Also seeing some of that mold on the Singani roots. That's not permanent, won't be here for forever. We could get in there with a toothbrush and clean it up if it really starts to bug us or it's taking too long to go through its natural cycle and eventually go away. But so far, I'm not really in a hurry to do anything to this aquarium. I'm actually just really surprised at how there's no issues at all so far, knock on wood. <laughs> like, I'm really crossing my fingers. Everything in this tank is just doing really, really well for the first week and a half. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. The two to three week mark is always a pivotal time for a new aquarium. And so I'm just gonna have to stay on top of my game here and, and maintain it. The Crypt Parva down here, the super long immersed leaves, they're starting to melt away slowly. This is just such a slow growing plant that any part of its growth process is gonna take longer than we want it to, but it's starting to get there. I think what we're gonna do here soon is probably move some of these out of the very front here, kind of tuck them back, and then fill in something else. So that'll probably be a part of the next update video. The Monte Carlo is also doing pretty good. I'm not seeing a lot of leaf die off, and we are starting to see some new roots develop, so that's a really good sign. The dwarf hair grass that we ended up getting from the farm looks as if it's not Exactly, dwarf hair grass. So we see some long stringy growth coming out of that. We did end up replacing quite a bit of the original pieces we put in with some tissue culture stuff that is the actual dwarf hair grass. So I think we're gonna leave some of these weird pieces in here and just see what they do over the next few weeks. If we have to remove them, no problem. They're just tucked into that dragon stone. It's not like they're gonna propagate all over the place. Here's a cool shot for you. There is some dwarf hair grass that is sending out all kinds of roots out of that dragon stone. I love seeing that, that's so cool. So yeah guys, that is Ancient Gardens. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I, I love this tank so much. I hope you guys love it too. We're gonna be doing just, I'm gonna film this tank as much as I possibly can. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't do this without you. This is something I would never be able to afford if it wasn't for you guys watching the channel and supporting me through all the ways that you guys do that. It just, having this is, crazy and it means so much to me. I hope you're excited to watch this tank develop. I need to know fish suggestions, guys. Like, I like there's so many options, I feel like, but at the same time, I feel like I'm limited to small fish, right? To preserve the scale. I don't really know what the best move is. I definitely haven't picked out anything to go in this tank yet, so I need your help. I need you to drop it down in the comments. Give me some choices. There's a lot of them, but I don't know, maybe, maybe start with small fish and we'll go from there. So there it is guys, Ancient Gardens. It's done, but it's not done because I think there's a lot more storytelling that can happen with this aquarium. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new guys. Hit the notification bell so you know when any of the new videos come out. I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you liked it. It helps me out a ton. We'll see you in the next one guys.